Hey everyone, Jim Midnight Road Garage. Today we're doing some front brakes on this 2007 Solstice. So I'm going to be replacing the brake pads and the rotors on the front. The company I chose to use is a company called Power Stop. I've used them in the past. Uh, I'm not sponsored by them or anything. They're, they're not paying me. Uh, but I've used them in the past with great success in some of my other vehicles. So that's what I'm going to use on this. You can get them from Amazon. You can get them from Jags. Uh, you can get them from Summit. There's a lot of places you can get them from. You can shop around. Amazon's usually the cheapest. First, let's take a look at what comes in the box. So this is basically how the box comes. You've got a set of PowerStop Evolution Sport brake pads. And in this box down here are uh, drilled and slotted rotors. So let's take a look at these. As you can see, they are labeled as to which side they go on. So make sure you're paying attention to that when you put them on. So let's take a look at what comes in the box. Of course, you've got your uh, pads. You've also got some silicone lube. And as you can see, it tells you exactly where it is you need to put it. You've got some new slides and some rubber boots. So that's everything that comes with the kit. Let me give you a rundown on the tools we're gonna need. Okay, here's a look at some of the tools I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna be using this uh, flat blade screwdriver to help compress the caliper. This is a actual caliper compressor so that's uh, I'll probably use that as well I've got an impact gun to take the uh, wheel off you could use a four-way as well I prefer to use an impact uh, then you're going to need a ratchet uh, and a couple sockets you're gonna need a 14 and a 15 and you may or may not need a t30 to get the uh, rotor off and speaking of rotors you might also need to use that hammer but anyways that's what I'll be using so let's get started step one is to get the wheel off as you can see it's still on but i've got the jack underneath it and what i'm going to do next is i'm going to go ahead and loosen up these lugs and then take the wheel off uh, it should be noted that there is a proper location to put this jack if you put it in the wrong place you will mess up the uh, body panels you'll probably crack them on the bottom so you want to be careful about that i'll put a link in the description to the solstice forms where you can find the proper uh, jack location. It's a little difficult uh, with my setup to, to show you where that is. They have some great photos uh, of where that is. And um, I actually saw those before I bought the car because I, I wanted to know more about this particular kind of car before I bought it. So I joined the Solstice forums then. I recommend that if you have a Solstice and um, Solstice forum guys that might watch this video, uh, there's no need to leave me a comment and then delete it telling me how great the solstice forums are i already know i already go there so uh, great place if you got a solstice highly recommend it anyways moving on let's get this tire off okay you might be wondering why I'm replacing these when you can see that there's still plenty of pad. The issue really with these is the rotor. There's a huge, huge ridge on it. It's not thick enough and it's just not, not breaking right. So I'm replacing the uh, pads. This car sat for a few years, so I'm just, I'm not happy with the performance. Kind of scored up. Next up, we're gonna work on getting this caliper off. So if you wanna use the screwdriver method, for compressing the pads this is the time to do it when I do that I usually do it from here first and just start uh, start the process and you see I can get a gap now I'm replacing these rotors so I don't really care if I score the rotor but if you're not replacing the rotors you got to be careful and once you've got it started that makes it easy to go through this hole in the back and then you get much better leverage. But that's all I'm going to do because that is enough, that is enough to get this caliper off. And uh, once it's off, I'm gonna use this tool instead because this is what I prefer to use. So uh, this bolt here needs to come off and this bolt down here needs to come off. Those are your caliper bolts. We'll take those out, those are 14 millimeters. So let me get those off. You can see that just folds uh, folds down once you get it loose. 
Now, if all we were doing was the pads, this would be far enough. And we could just take these pads out, put the new pads in. But we're replacing the rotors, too, so this whole bracket has to come off. But you can just pop these pads out now, and you're good. Just like that. While you're doing those pads, you might want to skip the next part. Okay, to get the rotor off, we need to take this copper bracket off. It's going to be... Uh, this 15 bolt right here, 15 millimeter bolt, and there's another one right down below it. So we're gonna take those two off and then pull this out. So the copper bracket's off now, and we need to remove that Torx bit uh, bolt. That is a uh, T30, and then we might need to use the hammer if this is uh, stuck to the hub, which it probably is. We'll have to tap it uh, until it breaks free, so it'll rust. Rust sticking it together. Okay, so we've got the caliper bracket off. Uh, as you can see, I have the caliper sitting on the floor. This has plenty of brake line to do that uh, in my setup. If you are stretching the brake line when you do that, put something underneath it to hold that up so it doesn't mess up the brake line while you're working on it. Mine just happens to be enough that it can sit there. It's okay. All right, let me get this. Uh, let me get this off, and then we'll get this rotor out of the way. Put the new one on. So using a T30, we're going to take this bolt off now. Uh, as you can see, the rotor is already starting to come off. A lot of times, these uh, these will get rusted onto the hubs, and you have to take a hammer and smack it a couple times to get it to come off. This side's good. Uh, the other side's probably not. But uh, anyway, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. All right, let me get this off here. So it's time to replace these, and since I have the caliper bracket off, I'm just gonna do it on the table here. Uh, if you take a look here, that might be why my brakes were wearing funny. As you can see, there's some sort of, some crap in here, and that may have been holding the uh, brake pad up. That could be the problem. Anyways, doesn't matter. I'm replacing the slides, and replacing the brakes, replacing the rotor, so it doesn't matter. All right, let me pull those out. So we're just gonna pull this out. Just like that new one, identical. I don't want to wash off any crap that's in here. Goes in just like that. And you can see this has little metal tangs. So it'll kind of keep you from putting it in wrong. Next we can replace these if we want to. I don't know if you can tell, but the OEM is better quality than the ones that came with the kit. And the OEMs uh, are not broken and they still have quite a bit of uh, elasticity to them. They don't feel hard or anything. So I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave the OEMs on here uh, just because of, these boots are better. Okay, I'm working on the front passenger side. So this is the rotor we want. I'm going to go ahead and take the sticker off of here, just so it's a completely flat surface. Okay, this part's pretty straightforward. You just put it on like you're putting on a wheel. It just goes straight on. Now, I can assure you, you should not be alarmed if when you go to do your job, that this, uh, this torque screw is missing. Because uh, I know I've done tons of these, and the person who did the... Uh, we replaced the rotors the last time uh, did not put this back in so don't be too surprised if it's not there but also not a big deal to put it back on okay so we have the rotor in place now it's time to put the caliper bracket back in uh, what we can do now because we have this bracket off is we can go ahead and put these pads in before we put it in it makes it a little bit makes it a little bit easier now this pad here this is the inside pad you can see this piece right here, this is, is what your, uh, is your brake wear indicator. When it gets, when this pad wears out, that'll start hitting the rotor and, and uh, make that awful squealing noise. To let you know that your brakes need to be replaced. Or it'll just snap off and uh, then you won't hear anything until you hear grinding metal. Hopefully you pay more attention to your brakes than that. But uh, anyway, so uh, this... 
This is the inside. This is the inside one. The one that doesn't have this goes on the outside. So there's two just like this and two without it. So this goes on the inside. As you see, I already put grease on the back and on the metal tangs here. So that's what goes on those slides. So we're gonna go ahead and pop this in. Don't really know if I'll be able to do this one-handed. Yeah, there it is. Okay. And then this one also have not put the grease on. Let me put the grease on here real quick. Here's our caliper bracket ready to go back in. And uh, we've got the pads in here already. Everything's been greased up. And it's just gonna go like this. And then we're gonna put that uh, 15 millimeter bolt back in. Let me set this down for a second. Not sure what the exact torque spec on that is, but uh, it's pretty difficult to get off, so you want to definitely put it on there really well. The next thing you're going to want to do, make sure those are pushed in as far as they'll go, as close to the rotor as they'll get. And then we're going to put our caliper in place. Now, if you did not compress your caliper, you're going to have problems right here. This is going to be too wide. And uh, the good news is, you can still compress this. And I'll actually show you how to do it. Okay, so you insert the old pads. You just put the old pads into the caliper. Put the caliper expansion tool in. And then just tighten it up. Until you can't tighten it anymore. And then you'll know that the caliper has been completely... Just take that out. Take those out. You can see the caliper is compressed, and now it should just fit right on. All right, as you can see, we're in there. Let's see. As you can see, we're good to go. All we have to do now is put those bolts in, and this side will be done. Okay, I tightened up the last two caliper bolts over here, and this side is good to go. Just got to put the wheel back on, and then I'm going to do the other side. But I won't bore you by making you watch all that. Let me get that done. And then we'll get to testing it. Okay, so I just finished up the driver's side, put the wheel back on, and now we're ready to test it, right? No. Wash your hands first. Or if you're smarter than me, take your gloves off. But uh, anyways, after I wash my hands, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the vehicle, and I'm going to pump the brakes a couple times. Do not, and I repeat, do not just get in your car, put it in reverse or drive, and... Go off for a drive thinking you've got brakes. You do not have any brakes until you've pumped it a few times. So start it up, pump it a few times, then check your brake fluid level. So we're going to do that in just a minute. So I've already fired it up, pumped brakes a couple times, and uh, now I'm just going to check the brake fluid. And I've, I've got plenty in it. I'm not too surprised. Uh, if you do need some, it tells you right on the cap what you should be using. Dot three fluid from a sealed container. So make sure that's what you use if you need to put some brake fluid in it. Uh, why don't you want to use brake fluid from a non-sealed container? Uh, because brake fluid will suck up moisture from the air and then you'll have moisture in your brake lines. And that is no bueno. So it is dark outside now. So I'll probably finish this video tomorrow. Well, it's a beautiful day to take out the solstice and see how the brake job went. Let's go. So let's check our rear view mirror. There's no one behind us. Let's see what the brakes are like. Oh yeah, that's much better. Oh good, it's 
stop sign. Yeah, the weird, weird kind of pulsing that I was feeling is uh, no longer there. Those other pads and rotors definitely had some sort of issues. There was a little, a little bit of uh, uh, brake pulsing, and that appears to be gone. It's a much smoother, smoother feel on the brake now. So, let me see. Oh yeah, so much better. So much better. All right, let me keep driving for a little bit. Well, no doubt about it, the, uh, the new power stop brakes, definitely a major improvement over the brakes that were on here. I'm um, really not sure what was wrong with them. They were pulsing and making noise. Uh, it may have been that piece of crap that was on the slide, but uh, don't know, don't care. Problem solved. So anyways, hope you like my video. Um, please like, subscribe, comment. I would love to hear from you, especially if you have a Solstice or Sky. Uh, let me know what you think, and I'll uh, see you guys down the road.